Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is a Barasque, a Bacchitillion Barasque. It's a tier 8 French medium, a premium medium, located on the north spawn of Malinovka. This one is under the command of Konopnik. Yes, he's back in action again, but this time in a slightly different tank. Last time we saw him in the Viz 55, this time the Barasque. And we've got a two replay video for you. Game on. Now, there's a lot of uh, players in the limp joining What RT Noobs and sending their videos in. We do appreciate it because some of these replays are absolutely excellent. And say so we saw some cracking videos from uh, Kanopkik with his um, his 55. And of course, from Oxidor, we've been getting the RT videos, and most of them are uh, ace tankers and, well, they're really great battles. Well, Konopnik sent in this uh, Barask game and, uh, well, the Barask, as you know, is a fake tank. It didn't actually exist. It's basically the bottom half of a Batch at 12 ton, which, as you know, is a uh, 1940s designed light tank for the French. Never got put into production, though. Oh, but he got that shot. It's a two-shot autoloader mounted in an EBR 105 turret. So it's a 105mm gun and it's capable of doing 360 alpha and 240mm of penetration with the premium rounds. With the standard rounds it's only 190 but Knopnik's loaded nothing but the premium and a few HE just in case. Because the HE are quite useful because you can use them to either get a reset or as you can see here 440 alpha 53mm of pen. And there are usually some tanks which actually have light enough armor that you can do that sort of damage to. It's a tier 8 game, and so that means he's the same tier as everyone else. And he's looking at that Lynx and saying, I want that. And he got him! <laughs> nice shot! Been seeing some great shots from uh, the players in the game where you think, oh no, he's never going to get that. And he does get it. As I say this, oh, he's not loaded. Oh, but he ram killed him. In fact, he more than ram killed him. I think if you want to see that one again, and I would like to replay that to actually see what actually happened. Just uh, run that back. Yep. Okay, so we look and come back from that one. You can see the Lynx decides, I want a piece of him. And he drives in, grabs into the side, and that's the end of the Lynx. And Konopnik didn't even need to fire, so that was an expert move from somebody who knows what they're doing. In fact, you can get ram kills merely by sideswiping someone, and that's a good way for an arty to kill another tank, because arties can't build up a huge amount of speed, and they're usually fairly light on armor. But if they sideswipe an enemy at speeds, and we just recently saw that in a batch at 155.55 somebody used. They sideswiped the enemy and they took them out. And it was a heavy tank. So it just goes to show if you play the vehicle correctly, you can get great results. Well, the first shot goes into the ELC Evan 90. He misses with the second shot. He's having to escape. He's only got a two shot autoloader. The standard reload 21.54. And Konopnik's got 20.20. .20. Uh, unfortunately, the Progetto 46, Amaractus. So, Konopnix had to repair his Amarak, otherwise his reload time would get tremendously bad. But he does get one round into a TNH 105-1000 up on top of the hill. He's looking to see if he can get another shot up there, but I think they're being a bit cautious. Might get one on the Tiger 2. We had a go, because he was unspotted at the time, so we don't know. But they are firing back in this direction. You can see the ground kicking up between him and them. Now, it is a medium tank. Doesn't have the same qualities as uh, a light in terms of uh, having the same camo on the move as it does when it's stationary. But what it does have is a very high top speed, 62 kilometers an hour. And that means that the Barras can buzz around the battlefield really quickly. Big drawback is that two second reload. It's not, well, it's not a big re uh, drawback, but it does delay the firing. And of course, the other thing is that it does take a little while to dial in on target once you actually stop. 
I think that was one of the things they didn't sell you on when they had this as one of those uh, mini marathons to actually pick up a vehicle. Oh, we got spotted. Fires one into the turret and has to move. Yes, because he's attracting enemy fire and he might need to go over the edge of the cliff into the dip to save himself from enemy fire. Is that Progetto, the one who hit him earlier? He's got to be cautious because there's an enemy just to his right as well as the Progetto. And he gets two shots into the Progetto, so that gets some back on him. 692 hit points. That's a, a low roll, technically, on both shells. Okay, waiting for the shell to go in. I think he's third marking it at the moment. That's why he's uh, using nothing but premium. Obviously, you know, some people say, oh, it's unfair to use premium, premium ammo. But no, I don't, because I know that if you're trying to mark you need to get every bit of damage that you can. And you can't afford to have a shell that doesn't penetrate the target. You need all your shells to be effective. There is somebody down there, a tank destroyer. Now the enemy are down to five players now. We know where the Shrek is, so the one down in the south must be the ISU-152K. And he has got a very big Alpha, 750. So we don't really want to get hit by him if we can help it. Oh, we've been spotted again. Well, he got one hit and killed the TNH-105-1000. Now, can he get the shot? There? Yes, he got one into the Shrek. Now, he's heading in the direction. And there's the shot from the ISU. And he's just blown his wad. Oh, we hit us in the rear. We've got a fire. We're still burning. Oh... The Shrek got us. I was about to say that now that the uh, ISC-152K had uh, fired his round, he's in a long reload, and that uh, Knocknick would have got a shot on him off his next reload. But sadly, it didn't come about. And that's it. The game's over. They've won. Here's the end of battle stats, and that was the second class tanker for Konopnik in the Bachatillion Brask. He got a fire for effect for doing more damage in the hit points of his own vehicle. He also picked up a high caliber for dealing the most damage in that game. And he got a tank sniper as well for getting the most damage at a distance of 300 meters or more. And his win eight from the battle was 6,534, which is super unicum and quite a bit more. Let's have a look at team score. Well, we can see he's definitely at the top of the table with 4,708 hit points. Nobody else was near it, really. In fact, the closest was the T-34 on his own team with 2,411. So he definitely excelled because he was pumping out those shells and getting good hits on the enemy. The third highest damage in the game turned out to be the Caliban on the enemy team with 1,857. And in fact, they also had that Shrek, the guy who fired that round in and killed Gnopnik, uh, he got 1,811. So they were good players, it's just they got at targets of opportunity. And in fact, uh, you'll see that when you come look at the kills, because the highest number of kills is, yes, Gnopnik, he's managed to get two kills. So did the one of the tank destroyers. I think that's one of the Italian ones, because it hasn't loaded the name in yet. Two for the Lerva, two for the ELC Ever 90. And the only one on the enemy team who managed to get more than one kill was the tank that killed Knocknick. Yes, it was the Shrek, uh, the Shrek TVP. Yes, he got two in that game as well. When it came to base XP, yep, he's got that one. So he's got the top in all three columns in this one. 1,202 means he's the only player to get over 1,000 in the game. The next highest being the Lerva, got 862. And the third place was the T-34, who 844. Let's have a look at detail. Well, he fired 15 rounds in that game, got 13 direct hits and 13 penetrations. Thanks to the fact that he did use the premium ammo, it really makes it more effective, especially when you're trying to mark it. 4,708 hit points of damage, of which 2,245, so nearly half of the ammo, half of the distance he did rather, was at more than 300 meters, long range shots. He also got three hits received from the enemy, and all three were penetrations, and that's down to the armor on this vehicle, which we'll look at shortly. It's very thin, which means that just about anything that touches you is more likely going to go through. 
uh, but he did get that lovely kill on the uh, Link 6x6, who made a huge mistake by driving straight uh, over that ridge line uh, at um, Canopic, because he could just sideswipe him. He just needed to, to, to damage him slightly. And it effectively, it finished him off without Knopnik needing to fire around at him. So uh, let's have a look at the rest of the detail. He also spotted one enemy vehicle, damaged six of the enemy, killed two, 628 hit points of spotting assist. He earned 126,378 credits from the game and after repair, ammunition, resupply and consumables. And seeing as he actually fired nothing but premium ammo, he still came out with a profit of 28,779 credits for the battle. 1,803 XP, 180 for this being a premium vehicle, and took away 1,983 experience points altogether. Let's have a quick look at the armor profile for this thing. Because, uh, yes, you'll see it's weak armor when you realize. Uh, it looks strong considering it's got red there, but don't let that deceive you. It's only 40 millimeters thick. That's the strongest armor on this vehicle. And it's because it's rounded at the front there, It's there's no... Um, angling to actually increase. There is on the top deck here, 20 millimeters angling, angled comes up to 31. And on the lower plate, it's 20 millimeters again, but coming up to 44.9. So it's not very strong. If we look at the turret, we can see that the front of the turret is uh, 15 millimeters and it's coming straight out at 15 millimeters. The sides of the turret are just 10 millimeters. I mean, a tier one tank could penetrate this with no ease, what's, no difficulty whatsoever. And the size of the vehicle, 20 millimeters again. Uh, as I said, um, a, a lull tractor could easily penetrate a brass. Not a, no problem at all. Uh, it's got no armor. That's to make it go, light, uh, go fast. And of course, remember, this is a combination of the EBR 105 turret, which of course is fake, but um, based on the Panhard EBR, they were thinking about modifying and putting a 105 millimeter turret on the tank, but they never did. Uh, it's only the 90 millimeter is the strongest one that the EBRs had. But the hull, yeah, that's pure batch at 12 ton, and they definitely had batch at 12 tons. They, as I said, they designed them in the 40s and they did all the necessary testing, but it never got put into mass production. If we look at the um, the live model, you can see it's all green because yeah. Apart from the tracks, it's any shell touches this vehicle goes straight through. Let's have a quick look at the modules, and you'll see straight away that Wargaming has never developed the module map for the Brask. But that's not a problem because if we look at the next one, we can see yeah they did do the module map for the Batchat 12 ton, and it's basically the same vehicle except with an EBR turret. So we can take it as read that the hull would be the same. It's just the turret slightly different. We've got the driver on the right hand side with the driver's port and on the left hand side of the vehicle is a fuel tank. Now I seem to recall that normally uh, things like AMXs, this is a bat chat, normally AMXs would have the engine up front but no in this one the engine is actually at the rear of the fuel tank there and the transmission is what's up front on the left hand side of the driver. Uh, behind the driver we've got a Two big Amoraks. Uh, in fact, I think actually you can see it's stacked together. There's three Amoraks uh, all together. There's one, two, three, and there's the fourth, which is kind of circular underneath the turret basket. Now, the turret basket, as they say, is for the 12 ton, the batch at 12 ton, but basically we can take it as red. It's, it's virtually the same except slightly flattened. It's got an autoloader mechanism. And the Amorak in that autoloader mechanism there. We've got the uh, gunner on the left-hand side of this tank. The tank commander on the right-hand side, because that's where the cupola is. And behind him, he's got the radio. So I think we can take it as read that it's basically the same in the Panhard EBR. Um, it's, it's the same turret as the Panhard EBR, but even the EBR doesn't have a module map. So we'll have to say that, yes, it's more than likely... The same module map for the batch hat, but the turret is probably, well, similar, I would say, to the um, uh, Panhard EBI, sim similar to the Brask. So uh, that may be the configuration for the Brask. I did say at the start of this video, we've got a two video, two replay video. So let's have a look at the second battle in his Brask. This time round, Knopnik is in the Brask on the south spawn of Ruinburg.
Game on. Now, when this tank first came out, people weren't certain about it. But since then, they've actually grown to love it a lot. And it is actually one of the best medium tanks in the game, other than the uh, Pajetto. Lots of people have rasps and they use them to ambush the enemy and do huge amounts of damage on them. He didn't connect with that one, but he did with that. <laughs> a Type 59, which used to be one of the top medium tanks, the top premiums, is now outwitted by a Barras. Of course, he's got two shots to get you and he can do 720 alpha if he gets the shots in. He's almost loaded. Type 59 puts one in. Doesn't get a chance to get the kill. He was spotted though, so he's pulling back just a little. Doesn't want that SMV CC67 to get a chance to put a round into him. Now you notice there is another Barask in this game. Unfortunately, he got killed. It was a little too rash and he went up close. Oh, EBR, bad move. He got both rounds in. He didn't get um, uh, the Alpha, though. 360, uh, when he got the second shot, was a high roll, but the first shot was a low roll, which meant that the uh, he got less than the 720 he wanted. Okay. He's got two more shells. Oh, Type 59. Yeah, no problem with that first kill. You can play this tank very aggressively, even if you're just holding a position and taking on targets of opportunity. The Barask is an ambush tank, and oh, he just got ambushed by that Lorraine 40 ton. But he fired one back, and he's still got one shell spare. The Lorraine is trying to get away. Takes another round, but yes, and he got Amarakt. The Lorraine got a lucky shot in the Amaractus. Well, you saw in the module map that the Amarak is actually quite big. It's huge, actually, and there's four parts to it. So, And that's not including the reloader. And I think the shell that he took as he was pulling away was through the main body of the tank, not the turret. He's looking to see if he can get that Lorraine 40 ton again. The Cobra's moving up. Now, he's got uh, a two-shot 120mm as well. Or is it four shots? I think it's four shots, the Cobra, isn't it? Or am I wrong? I seem to recall it was four shots with a very long reload. And the enemy's just lost their remaining 40 ton, which means now that Konopnik can move up and he might be able to get that Scorpion G or the Standard B. The Standard B is coming to try and kill the, the Cobra. And in fact, he's put a big hit in, but we now can take advantage of him and put two rounds into him. Unfortunately, we did lose the Cobra. The Standard B got another shot in and took him out. But they lost. Well, the Standard B is still in action, but he's very low on hit points now. The other thing about the Brass that's actually quite good, if you fire both your shots, you can retire fairly quickly. Because, of course, that's 62 kilometers an hour top speed get out of the way of the enemy guns to stop receiving any more hits. Unfortunately, Knopf Nick's now to 26% of his health now, so he's only got a quarter. And he, he would only need a couple of hits from the enemy, and he's out of the game. Much okay, so the enemy's just lost their TE-34-3. And we're pushing through the enemy. We're going to come up behind the Waffentrager. The Waffentrager's a one-shot now for his gun. Oh, that was so easy. Progetto pumps one in. Now, the Progetto thinks to himself, maybe I'll be able to get a shot on Konopnik. Because he might think that Konopnik's on reload. I don't know. He doesn't think he's on reload. He didn't realize that he actually took out the Waffentrager. So, we're just hiding on this corner for a second. The Progetto's still there. He'll get taken out by the Object 777. Okay, we've been spotted, but the enemy's not trying to take us yet. There's the AMX 1390. No, he's not coming up either. The enemy did lose their Progetto. 
the Object Travel 7 version 2 did get him. There's an SU-130 PM just on the corner, so he needs to be cautious here because he could go out the game in just one shot. Oh, AMX-1390 missed with the first shot, but he can get this one. He gets him with one round. And that was the Lever Slayer's medal. He's just taken out two enemy tanks, which had one tier higher than him in a medium tank. Yes, the 1390 is a tier 9. He's tier 8. And there is the T-103. Need to drive by. He's loaded. He gets in with one shot, but runs into the wall. He was spotted. He doesn't want to pop out just yet because of the SU-130 PM. And potentially, he's got a high caliber. He's got 20% of the enemy hit pool. And there's only one enemy left. It's the standard B. So the SU-130 PM was already dead. I was missing out on that. So only one enemy left, but that's standard B. We hit him before. He didn't die off, remember. He, he only got, he got a couple of shots in. He was very low on hit points, and then he took the Cobra out. But now we can move up to the center. And there is the SU-130PM on our team. Up there. He's told him he's moving in from the side to outflank the enemy. Hopefully he can get the kill on the standard B. He's got four kills already. Okay, we don't know where the standard B is. Don't really want to give him an easy shot. He could be anywhere over on the other side near their cat, waiting for our guys to turn up. He was last seen near the village, but we still don't know where he is. Now, the smart move might be to actually move over to the east side of the map and drive up that side ahead of the SU-130PM. And then uh, we'll get the spot on him. And then the SU-130PM can finish him off. There's only two left on our team. I have the feeling that the standard B is up near the cap area. They were marking, the ELC Evan 90 was marking exactly where he was, and that was behind those rows of houses using the trees for cover. Knopnik's only a one shot. He'd only need an HE round to take him out. But of course, the, uh, the standard B is going to be loaded with standard ammo, more than likely. In fact, the SU 130PM has got much more hit points than us. Oh, he's decided to go up. He's got his full health. So he can actually take a round and from the standard B and not worry about it. Standard B hasn't tried to shoot him yet. We haven't seen any fire. Okay, Konopnik's going to try and shoot from this end. The Brask is not good at long range shooting, but as you saw in the last video, he did get it. Oh, he's got him! Yes! <laughs> it worked! Great play by Konopnik. Well, that was a fun battle uh, in the Barask on Ruinberg. Konopnik managed to get a first-class tanker. No ace tanker this time round, but he did get the high caliber. He got a, a fighter badge for getting at least four kills in the game. He also picked up a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points for his own vehicle. And he got a bruiser medal as well for getting at least five critical hits, as well as the Leather Slayer's medal for killing two enemy tanks or tank destroyers that were one tier higher than his. And on top of that, the high caliber for dealing the most damage in that game overall. The win eight was 7,387. I must do a correction right before we take it any further. He didn't kill the standard B. It was the SU-130 SU PM who actually got the kill in the end. Konopnik did get the shot in, but it was the, the uh, SU-130 that actually did get the, the kill shot in the end and, and win the game. Because uh, you can see here, he did get two shots into the guy for 708 hit points. But that final kill went to the tank destroyer. Um, and I'm not sure if he did hit the uh, uh, the enemy, but even, even so, it was good shooting by the SU-130PM at close range. So let's have a look at the uh, team scores. 
Well, we can see that he got 4,280 hit points of damage. And yet again, there wasn't really anyone near him because the T-30 only got 3,463. Another basically almost, not quite 1,000 points down, but 800 down. But it's still a lot. And the third highest player in the game was the Object 777 version 2, got 2,984. That SU-130PM, he did quite well, 2,383. And that's very good when you consider that he didn't suffer any damage during that game. Because, uh, of course, he was um, being very careful not to let the enemy have a go at him. When it came to kills, yep, Knopnik got that one as well. Four kills to him, four kills to the standard B as well. And three kills went to the t 30 and to the weapon trigger Alpha Panzer Fear on the enemy team. And when it came to base XP, he's done it again. Yes, he's got another high XP with 1,398. He's the only one to get over 1,000. 953 went to the SU-130PM. 889 went to the Object 777 version 2. So another great game in the Brask. I think he likes this tank. It's very good at doing ambush damage on the enemy. And it seems that he does know how to drive it to do that as well and when to fire and when to retreat so unfortunately that Lorraine 40 ton he's just a four shot autoloader and although cannot think could actually get him while he was in the reload and did uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, he did manage to pump in a couple of rounds and make life difficult and the standard B did as well when he fired a round in because of course I think there was an Amorak there as well anyway it was a great victory. Uh, it all worked out well in the end. Let's have a look at the um, detailed response. Detailed um, scores. 16 shots fired, 14 direct hits and 13 penetrations. 4,280 hit points of damage, all of it done at close range. Four hits received from the enemy and all four were penetrations. I, I did mention the armor is absolutely dreadful. So you've got to avoid being hit if you can help it. He also damaged eight of the enemy, killed four, did 335 hit points of damage assistance. He earned 123,470 credits from that one. And even though he fired premium ammo, he still came out on top again with 22,009 credits profit. 2,097 XP, 210 for this being a premium vehicle, and 2,307 experience points altogether. He says, quick thinking, team play, carry brask. Yes, it is. And uh, those people who know how to handle this thing can earn a lot of credits, but it just takes a lot of getting used to. I, th I suppose the best way to actually learn how to use the brask is also to use the Batch at 12 ton, because uh, that's basically the same vehicle with many of the similar characteristics. But the brass, well, yes, that 105 millimeter gun is so powerful and uh, it does do a lot of damage and it's fun for those people who do like the brass because you can just uh, drive up and do a drive-by on someone put two shells in them and disappear before they can do anything about it uh, and it worked quite well in this game i hope you enjoyed both those replays if you did please give the video a like do subscribe to our channel leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm and thank you for watching